In this video, we're just getting started with probability. And so most of what I'm going to show you in this video is just using Excel as a calculator. So until we get to factorial combinations and permutations, essentially we're just going to be finding probabilities using Excel as a calculator. And then I'm going to show you some functions for factorial combinations and permutations. For our first two questions, we're just going to take a look at letting Excel be our calculator. And in fact, all of the ones on this screen, we're just going to let Excel be our calculator. So for my first simple probability question, my scenario is rolling a five. So obviously I have a fair six-sided die. One of the sides is a five. So my calculation would be equal one divided by six. Notice that's going to calculate what is one divided by six. Now, if you need only a certain number of decimal places, you can just um, right click on that cell and go to format cells and choose a number and how many decimal places you would like. If it doesn't matter how many decimal places you show, then just skip that step. Uh, the next scenario, again, for simple probability is drawing a king. So whenever you're dealing with probability, you should know dice and you should know cards because you're going to get a lot of those. So in a standard deck of cards, there are 52 cards and four of them are kings. So equal four divided by 52. And I don't need to reduce that. I'm just looking for the decimal. Let's take a look now at a couple of complement questions, keeping in mind that some of these questions are going to be very easy and some a bit more complicated. So for our first complement question, the probability that the light is red when I get to the light is 0.35. What's the probability that it's not red? Instead of just putting 0.65, which is obviously the answer, I'm going to put equals one minus 0.35 to let Excel calculate it for me. This lets Excel do the work and it shows your teacher, me, that you know how to use the rule of complement. The second question is a little bit more difficult. This one says the sum of two dice is not seven. So showing work, again, I would say equals one minus, and I'm going to just essentially combine all of the different ways that I could roll a seven. So how could I roll a seven? I could roll a one and a six or a six and a one. So that's two outcomes out of 36. I could roll a two and a five or a five and a two. So that's another two outcomes out of 36. And I could roll a three and a four or a four and a three. That's another two outcomes out of 36. So that's the way I'm choosing to show my work. And notice I get 0.8333 repeating. I have two rule of sum questions and I tried to include an easier one and a more difficult one. Remember the rule of sum says that if you have one event occurring, and that's when we see the keyword of or, notice in both of these examples I have or, if I have one event occurring but more than one uh, desired outcome, I can add the probabilities together. Um, if they have outcomes in common, I have to subtract the overlap or the intersection. So the first one, choosing a queen or choosing a king, I can say equals and then there are four queens out of 52 cards, and there are four kings out of 52 cards, and there are no cards that are both a queen and a king, so I don't have to subtract anything. So that's all I would have to do for that question. Now, the next one, choosing a red or a king, this one's a little bit different. So I would say choosing a red is, I could either say 26 out of 52 cards, or just one half of the cards are red. King, we just talked about, there were four out of 52 cards. And this one I have to subtract because there are cards that are red and king. So there is a king of hearts and a king of diamonds, and that fits in both categories. So I have to subtract those two cards out of 52 to find my solution. For my last two examples, without actually using a function in Excel, just letting Excel calculate for me, I want to take a look at the rule of product. And the first one, and uh, before we do that question, remember the rule of product says 
that if you have more than one event occurring, you're just going to multiply probabilities. So if there's four events, you're going to be multiplying four probabilities. Two events, two probabilities. You get the idea. So for my first question, rolling four ones in a row is actually four events. It's rolling a one, then rolling a one, then rolling a one, and then rolling a one. So I could either put equals, and then the probability of rolling a one is one divided by six, and then I could multiply that four times. Uh, that's too much work for me, so instead I'm just going to say one six to the fourth power. So that achieves the same goal. It's taking one sixth and it's happening four times. Now the second one I've left intentionally vague, choosing a king and a king. So you need to know is it with replacement or without replacement. If it's with replacement, it's saying, okay, you're going to take your hand into the deck of cards. You're going to, what's the probability that you pull out a king? Well, there's four kings out of 52 cards. With replacement means then you're going to take that king, put it back in the deck, shuffle it again, and then when you draw the second time, there are still four kings and there are still 52 cards. Without replacement says, okay, the first time, you're going to see what the probability is of pulling out a king, which is still four out of 52. But without replacement says, okay, you already pulled out one king, you didn't put it back in the deck, now what? Now what's the probability that you get another king? Well, there are now three kings left because we're assuming I pulled out a king the first time, and there's only 51 cards left because again, I've pulled out one card, which was a king. And so notice you're going to need to pay attention to the context of with or without replacement. For the last three, we're not going to go through a ton of specific examples for each one just because there are so many examples that this could literally be a video about probability instead of a video about how to use Excel in probability. So the, for the first one, we're just going to look at how can Excel calculate a factorial for us. So for instance, seven factorial, I'm just going to put equals and then the function for factorial is F-A-C-T. So fact seven would give me seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. Keep in mind that it might be something more complicated, like if I want to find how many ways to um, deal with banana, where banana has one, two, three, four, five, six letters, so six factorial, but obviously A occurs three times, so three factorial, and N occurs two times, two factorial. So again, I can still do that. Six, sorry, fact six divided by fact three times fact two, and it can calculate that for me as well. And then for combinations or permutations, again combination is where the order does not matter. So combin, and then the first value is the number of items, and the second value is how many are you choosing. So seven choose three would be that there are seven items and I need groups of three whereas a permutation order does matter. So each of those groups of three would be different because whoever got picked first, second, or third, that would make a difference. So if I have nine objects and I'm choosing all nine of them, then I'm going to write equals permute and then nine comma nine. 